God-given foes and God-given faith. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, not frightened in anything by your opponents, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Philippians 1, 27 to 29. Paul told the Philippians that living worthy of the gospel of Christ meant fearlessness before enemies. Then he gave them the logic of fearlessness. The logic is this. God has given you two gifts, not just one, faith and suffering. That's what verse 29 says. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Granted to you to believe and granted to you to suffer. In this context, that means both your faith in the face of suffering and your suffering are gifts of God. When Paul says, don't be frightened by your opponents, he had two reasons in mind why they don't need to be frightened. One reason is that the opponents are in the hand of God. Their opposition is a gift from God. He governs it. That's the first point of verse 29. And the other reason not to be afraid is that your fearlessness, that is your faith, is also in the hand of God. It too is a gift. That is the other point of verse 29. So the logic of fearlessness in the face of adversity is the double truth. Both your adversity and your faith in the face of adversity are gifts of God. Why is this called living worthy of the gospel of Christ? Because the gospel is the good news that God's blood of the covenant infallibly obtained for all his people the sovereign working of God to give us faith and to govern our enemies, always for our eternal good. That's what the gospel secured. Therefore, to live that way shows the power and goodness of the gospel. Therefore, fear not. Your adversaries can do no more than God grants, and he will grant all the faith you need. These promises are blood bought and sealed. They are gospel promises.